two Chevy Silverado with a 4.8 liter engine. We're addressing a PO463 trouble code, fuel level sensor circuit, signal high or open. Customer complaint obviously is the fuel gauge does not function. It is stuck on empty all the time. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna do is show the data for this fuel tank level. And we're gonna go back to our data display and we're gonna go under EVAP and accessory data, I believe that's where it is. And we're gonna look for our fuel tank level voltage, and that's this one right here. Our fuel level voltage, you can see on the scan tool that it is fixed at five volts all the time. So next thing we wanna do is go to the wiring diagram and show you how this thing works. So remember, we have five volts reading on the scan tool on the computer all the time for the fuel tank level. All right, so what I want to show for this is obviously the schematic first. And what I've done is I've pieced uh, the diagram together from five different pages. And I filled in the gaps. And what you're looking at would be, here's your, here's your tank uh, sending unit up here. So focused here. This would be, this would be the, uh, the fuel sending unit. It has the fuel pump and the gauge together. And you see it's a four pin connector. And we have uh, a gray and black goes to the pump, power, and ground. And then we have our orange, black, and our purple. And this is for our sending unit or our float. This little pointer right here is showing you that, that it actually moves across a variable resistor. Um, sorry, it moves across a fixed resistor. But as it moves, it's going to vary its resistance. The two wires that come to this flow, go to the PCM. PCM on this side, PCM on this side, just separated for easy viewing. And you see that the purple wire goes to pin 54 and it says fuel level. And the orange and black wire goes to pin 60 and it says sense ground. So what that means is our purple wire is our signal wire for the fuel tank level and our Orange and black is our sensor ground. Now, how does this thing work? On this design, this is identical in operation to a thermistor. Even though it's not a thermistor, it operates electrically identically to one. So, to, to describe what's going on in this circuit, um, the best thing that I can refer you to would be my thermistor section in my book. And uh, this is on page four, thermistor circuit operation. And I know it's not a thermistor. It's, it's not a temperature related variable resistor. It's actually movement that, that changes the resistance. As the float moves, it's gonna change resistance in that tank unit. But you can think of it as the same for now as far as operation goes. And what we have is there's our two wires that go to our, our tank unit. The difference would be on our design is this is a fixed resistor, and there is a wiper that's going to move across that goes to the signal. So just a little bit different as far as the resistance changes go, but the circuit's identical. And what you have is a 5-volt constant right here. That's what it says here, a constant 5 volts from an internal regulator. And what's important that you understand is this 5-volt is going through a fixed resistor and it's being sent out to our sending unit. This would be my purple wire right here. And this is my, um, was it orange and black? Yeah. So our orange and black. Now how this works, again, just like the thermistor, is you have an internal voltage sensing circuit. So the computer's actually watching what it's sending out. This is the equivalent. You can think of this device right here as a voltmeter. This is a po your positive lead. This is your negative lead. A voltmeter, digital voltmeter, does not support current flow in the circuit. It's just sensing the voltage on that line. And so the computer is watching right here. There's a little eyeball, if you want to call it that. The computer is watching the voltage on this line right there. Okay? So that circuit, it needs to travel through one resistor which is internal to the computer 
on its way through another resistor, which is our tank unit, before it gets to ground. So what you need to understand here is that we have a voltmeter that basically a simple circuit like this. There's a resistor and another resistor and then ground. It would be a series circuit and we are monitoring the voltage. If you put a voltmeter in here to ground, we're monitoring the voltage level between two resistors. That's how this circuit is working. Okay? This external resistor changes. It varies in resistance. When the float is full, when the float is empty, that's going to change the amount of resistance to ground that this circuit is going to have. Now, if you think about it like this, uh, we can throw math in here, and I've done it in my book. I've shown you some Ohm's Law and how this happens, but one of the simplest ways to think about circuit and how it works would be pressure. And if you can picture this leg right here as a garden hose, I know it's a poor analogy, but it'll give you a good visual. Picture this as a hose, and there are two kinks in the hose. And you're measuring the pressure between two kinks in the hose. If this resistance is very high right here, that would be me squeezing that kink even tighter. What would the pressure do in here? Now granted, there is flow through this. You have to have flow to have a voltage drop, to have pressure changes. So there's water leaving the hose. If I squeeze this tighter, what's the pressure going to do in this leg of the circuit? Increase. It's going to increase. If you open this up more, what's the pressure going to do in here? It's going to decrease. So this one's kind of weird. A lot of people think when you have high resistance, you're always going to have a large voltage drop. Or if you have low resistance, you don't have much of a voltage drop. And what I just described to you is completely opposite. With low resistance here, you will have low voltage here. With high resistance here, you will have high voltage here because you're measuring before that resistor. This is how a thermistor circuit works too. So on a thermistor, that would be my outside resistor, you have something around 30,000 ohms cold and you might have something like 4.5 volts on this voltmeter between the two. Remember this one, this one's inside the computer, you don't see it. It's there though, trust me. As this thing on a thermistor warms up, its resistance drops. So maybe a thousand ohms hot and you might see maybe a half a volt, a half a volt in that signal circuit with low resistance on that coolant temp sensor. But think about this the same way as our flow. That's exactly what's going on is this resistor changes which changes your signal voltage. Now we took a reading on that. What was our reading? on the scan tool. Now, we didn't do a direct measurement yet, but on the scanner. So scanners interfaced with the computer and the scan tool for fuel uh, for the float level or tank level was five volts. So if the computer's reading five volts all the time, what are our variables with this? Let's plug it into this circuit because this is what we're dealing with. We're reading five volts on the scan tool. Could we have an open in the signal wire, now we call input signal wires, could we have an open in this signal wire causing 5 volts at the computer all the time? The answer is yes. Why? 5 volts is going to travel through the internal fixed resistor and has no ground. So with no ground, there's no voltage drop. And so what does the internal voltmeter read all the time? It will read five, it will report that to the scan tool, that's what we're reading. An open in the signal is one of our variables. Could we have a problem with the float? Whoops. Could we have a problem with the float, that the float itself, the resistor on the tank is bad? Would that also give us five volts all the time? And of course the answer is yes, same thing, no current flow, no voltage drop. And one other one. Could we have an open in the sensor ground? If you had an open here, you would have 5 volts that would travel across the resistor. Again, this voltmeter does not support flow. On its way through another resistor, 
and there's no ground. So you'd have five all the way out through the resistor and you'd have five volts on the ground. On, on this side of the open would be five, on this side would be zero. But those are our variables for what we're dealing with. We don't want to drop the tank, put a sending unit in this vehicle without first going back to the tank and doing some voltage readings. Okay, so opening the signal, bad sending unit itself, or an open ground. Five volts all the time on the signal circuit. So we're gonna to go to the tank, we're gonna take two measurements, see what we have, and we'll plug in some numbers. All right, before we do any voltage measurements, because we can do that too, what I wanna do is I wanna use the scan data to tell me whether or not that we have a wiring problem. And here's, here's the theory behind this. If I unplug this tank unit, and I take and jump the signal wire to the signal ground, what I'm going to do is cause all of the voltage inside the computer to drop across this first resistor. And it's going to go on its way to ground, and what you would read on the scan tool is zero volts. So if I'm, if I'm reading float level and this changes to zero volts, when I unplug the connector and jump these two together, what does that tell you about the signal wire integrity? Do we have any opens? No. What's it tell you about the ground wire integrity? It is also good. So very simply, a paper clip, unplug the connector, dump these two together, watch your scan data, and we want to see the five volt change to zero. Again, this is not going to harm the computer. This circuit is designed to be pulled to ground. That's how it works. That's how thermistor circuits work. There is no safety concern for wiring on a thermistor that gets shorted to ground. These circuits are designed to be, quote, shorted to ground. Maybe not fully. A full short would be a trouble code. Obviously, we're not going to be zero volts on these. But it is a common range on a circuit like this to have a half a volt all the way to four and a half volts. This resistor changes and pulls the circuit to ground. So when I put a paper clip in here, all I'm doing is a very fast signal circuit integrity test that identifies a good signal wire and a good ground wire with one test. So we're gonna do that one first. All right, this is a tough shot. Um, this is the top of the tank that we're looking at right here. And there are two T-pins I have going into this connector. And I have two channels connected, so I don't have to keep crawling back underneath here. What we're looking at is the sensor signal wire and the sensor ground wire together. And we're already connected. And I'm going to do the checks up top so I don't have to keep crawling back underneath here. So we're back on the scan tool. I changed it to a, a digital mode because the graph, I'm getting too much glare. And you can see on the scan tool, my fuel level voltage is five volts. And instead of crawling underneath the truck and jumping it down there, I already have two T-pins connected on the two wires. I have one on the signal wire and I have one on the sensor ground wire. And so what I'm gonna do to show you and then we'll, we'll focus back on the, on the scan tool is I'm just gonna take my two leads that I have connected because we're gonna do some voltage measurements here too. And understand that what you're looking at in the screen right here would be access to the signal and the signal ground. So if I was underneath the vehicle, which is very difficult to film and show you, what you'd be doing with the two T-pins is you'd be taking a paper clip and jumping the two together. And so essentially what I'm doing is exactly what, would, what you would do underneath the vehicle, but I'm showing you here because of video reasons. And I'm jumping those two together. Now let me zoom you back out a little bit on the scan tool. See if I can get both of these in the shot. And you can see that our tank level voltage right now is reading zero volts. I take my paper clip out and it reads five volts. Put the paper clip back in. And again, this is scan data, this is not the scope. I'm using the scope leads, which is a different test, to act as my jumper. Jump the circuit it reads zero volts. What that tells us right there, you're done 
This vehicle needs, needs a fuel tank sending unit. Your wiring integrity from the computer all the way back to the tank on both the signal wire and the sensor ground wire are good. That's what that test tells you. If you didn't have a scan tool and you needed to do this test with this trouble code, what you would have to do is you'd have to connect to the two different wires, which we've done already. and take a voltage reading. And so, pulling up my scope, this is basically what you would look at. That's a major glare, I apologize. Two different channels connected. I'm showing them both at the same time just for speed. And what you see is on my signal wire, I've fixed five volts, which is exactly what we're reading on the scan tool. So if you have five volts on the scan tool, you come under the car and you measure your signal and you have five volts on your signal wire, which is purple in our case, all the way back at the tank, what that tells you about the integrity of the wiring from the computer to the tank is good. You need to know where that is coming from. That's five volt source, computer sending it down the signal wire, watching what it's sending out. The fact that you're reading five volts all the way back at the tank means the signal wire is good. Now, how do you check the ground? Sensor plugged in, don't unplug it. We need the circuit loaded. Check your ground circuit and you see we're at 0.016, so we have 16 millivolts on the sensor ground. If this was a bad sensor ground, causing five volts on the signal all the time, we would be reading five volts on the sensor ground. The fact that our sensor ground is staying very low means your ground is good, you need a tank sending unit. So that would be the process you'd go through using a voltmeter with this trouble code. Take your two readings. If you're reading five and, and zero in this case, you're done. You need a tank sending unit. Let's flip this scenario for a second and say that we had zero volts all the time at the tank. How would you handle that? On the scan tool, let's say you had zero here all the time. What you would do is you would crawl underneath the vehicle and unplug the connector. If you unplug the connector and your voltage went from zero to five, you're done, you need a tank sending unit. If it stayed at zero, you have a wiring problem between the computer and the sending unit. And so that's the process you'd go through. Um, and I have this again in my book, thermistor section. And I also have it under another section in, uh, uh, titled signal circuit integrity. That's what we're doing here with the paper clip. Signal voltage fixed high on a thermistor. What do you do? Disconnect the thermistor, jump the signal to ground, watch the scan data change. It should go to zero. If your signal voltage is fixed low on the scan tool, you disconnect the sensor, it should jump to five. If it jumps to five, the integrity of your wiring is good. If it doesn't, you have a wiring problem. So that's it. We treat this fuel tank float level exactly like we would a thermistor on this design. We're done. This thing needs a tank sending unit. Float assembly is definitely bad.